Ever wondered how much the government really knows about you? As we navigate the digital age, our understanding of privacy is challenged. The idea of government surveillance isn't new, but the extent to which it reaches is a topic of heated debate. Are our personal lives truly personal, or are they just a series of data points in a government database? These ethical questions raise eyebrows and ignite conversations. This question becomes all the more relevant with the discovery of Vault 7. Vault 7, a major leak of the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency sent shockwaves across the globe when WikiLeaks published it in 2017. This wasn't just your everyday leak, it was a veritable Pandora's box revealing the CIA's sophisticated hacking capabilities and surveillance techniques. Imagine this. Your smart TV, that innocuous device in your living room, transformed into a covert listening device. That's right, through a program named Weeping Angel, the CIA developed the ability to record conversations even when the TV appeared to be off. But it didn't stop there. The encrypted messaging apps we all use thinking our conversations are private? Not quite. Vault 7 showed us that the CIA had the ability to bypass encryption on popular apps like WhatsApp and Signal. This revelation was a wake-up call. It opened our eyes to the extent of surveillance we hadn't imagined possible, and it was a chilling reminder of the fragility of our privacy. This revelation, of course, led to a storm of questions and concerns about privacy. The fallout from the Vault 7 leak was immediate and far-reaching. The world, in its digital naivety, was jolted awake by the revelation that their devices were not as secure as they had believed. The public reaction was akin to a wave of shock and disbelief, quickly followed by outrage. Many felt betrayed, their trust in technology and privacy shattered. Tech companies, the alleged guardians of our digital world, faced the brunt of this outrage. The leak had laid bare the vulnerabilities in their systems, vulnerabilities that were being exploited unbeknownst to them. This was a wake-up call, a call to action, and they responded. Companies like Apple, Google, and Microsoft, among others, swung into action, patching up their systems, plugging the holes that had been so publicly exposed. They worked tirelessly, not just to regain public trust, but to ensure that such a breach would not happen again. They tightened their security protocols, strengthened their firewalls, and enhanced their encryption. Governments around the world watched, their reactions varying from concern to indifference. Some took steps to strengthen their own cyber defenses, while others simply dismissed it as another instance of the ongoing cyber warfare. But the question remains, how much privacy do we really have in this digital age? In light of the Vault 7 revelations, the future of privacy seems uncertain at best. The discovery of this magnitude has sparked impassioned debates about the delicate balance between national security and individual privacy. So, where do we go from here? We are living in an era of unprecedented connectivity, where information flows freely, and data is the new currency. But this freedom comes with its own set of challenges. The same technology that allows us to connect, communicate, and share also leaves us vulnerable to surveillance and data breaches. The Vault 7 leak has served as a stark reminder of this dual-edged sword. On one hand, we have the advocates of national security who argue that surveillance is necessary to counter threats and maintain public safety. They see government monitoring as a lesser evil, a necessary trade-off in the face of escalating cyber threats and terrorism. On the other hand, we have the proponents of privacy who believe that the right to privacy is intrinsic and inviolable. They argue that surveillance oversteps boundaries, infringes upon civil liberties, and breeds mistrust in government institutions. So, how do we reconcile these opposing views? How do we strike a balance between ensuring national security and preserving individual privacy? One potential solution lies in stronger privacy laws. Laws that clearly define the boundaries of surveillance, that enforce transparency and accountability, and that protect citizens from unwarranted intrusion. But legislation alone isn't enough. Advancements in technology could also play a crucial role. More secure communication platforms, encryption technologies, and privacy-focused software could help safeguard our digital footprints. Tech companies have a moral and ethical responsibility to prioritize user privacy and to push back against unwarranted surveillance. The Vault 7 leak has opened our eyes to the extent of government surveillance, and it's clear that the conversation around privacy is more important now than ever. As we continue to navigate this digital age, the battle for privacy is far from over. 